Once outlawed in Cuba, private businesses are back. Since 2021, Cubans have been able to incorporate small and medium-sized businesses. More than 7,000 companies have so far been incorporated. Rojas Dairy employs 28 people to make yogurt and ice cream. I think small and medium-sized businesses have to come at the right time for our country. The economic situation in our country today is difficult, and businesses contribute to local development. The company buys milk from the state and imports cocoa and food coloring from abroad. In a country highly dependent on food imports, the hope is that small businesses like this will boost productivity and get more food on people's plates. Jack Sao Contreras used to work as a vet, but is now one of hundreds of thousands of Cubans working in the private sector and earning handsomely. The difference is enormous. When I worked for the state, I earned less than $40 a month. Now I can earn around $400 to $600 a month. But in a nation where teachers and scientists earn tiny salaries, this economist says the emergent private sector is already attracting highly qualified workers away from state jobs. The successful new private businesses will provide incomes which are multiples of what people can earn in the state sector, uh, of course, and that will cause um, some important issues to be addressed, including the brain drain, including the questions of social justice, access to goods and services, and so on. All of those things will arise from an increase in inequality. Back in the 1960s, Fidel Castro banned private businesses. Their owners, he said, were exploiters, living off their employees' labor. You don't hear language like that now. The private sector is growing in the midst of a crisis where many state industries are obsolete or in disrepair, and where the state just doesn't have enough money to supply people with the goods they need. After decades of anguished debate, the Communist Party of Cuba is finally moving towards a mixed economy. A growing private sector will likely increase production, but could erode social cohesion in what is still one of the most equal countries in the Americas. While for now the state remains the dominant economic force, a fundamental shift is underway. Ed Augustin, Al Jazeera, Mayabeke, Cuba.